Hey everybody, I'm excited to be recording another video for you guys. In my previous video about project estimating, I mentioned a document called Software Requirement Specification. And that's exactly what we're going to focus on today. If you want to learn how to prepare a useful project documentation, then keep on watching. Software Requirement Specification is a document that describes the whole scope of a project. It consists of a number of different aspects of a product, like the features, target personas, or a business model. In a single, it's the single most important document in the entire software development process. This document, or set of documents, is the best way to make sure everyone is on the same page uh, regarding the project. There's often a misunderstanding of what Agile software development means. Some people say and think it means that there's no need for any documentation and we're going to develop whatever we feel is right. It couldn't be further from the truth. Agile programming focuses on developing the best product possible thanks to adaptive planning, early delivery and continual improvement. However, it doesn't mean that there's no documentation needed. It's not going to be as detailed as a documentation for waterfall programming, but it's definitely necessary to have it as a base of every project. It allows us to have the same perspective of what the final product should look like while being agile in the way it's being developed. Documentation is also important for other aspects of the project, like project estimation that I talked about in my previous video, understanding and ensuring the business logic and business value of the project, prioritizing features based on the key market proposition, better task management and quicker deployment. Software requirement specification can consist of many different information. However, there's a few key elements that are always a part of the SRS. Usually documentation starts with the basic description of a product to create a general understanding of next points. It often mentions the goal for the project and what is the purpose for it. In order to develop a successful project, we need to create a value for that product. It can be a problem solution or a completely new market value. Either way, it's important to include it in the SRS. In case of having to make some changes along the way, it will be clear what the main focus for the project is. Some software requirement specification consists of product personas. It's a description of a main user target. There's usually between one to three personas per product. They are described by their age, gender, average earnings, hobbies, profession, and anything that is relevant to the business. Depending on the product, there might be other information like whether or not this person uses social media. These personas are being created to help understand what our targeted user might look for in their product and how to reach them. User stories are a method used to describe features in a product. We create a scenario of what we want the user to do on our app. Some features are too big to develop them within one sprint and they're called epics. They're being presented as a number of smaller user stories that eventually come together as a feature from the epic. To give you an example, uh, I'm gonna use Spotify app. So the epic would be as a user, I want to have a playlist of my favorite songs so I can find them easily. This epic needs a few other user stories to, to develop this feature. So we would create smaller user stories like as a user, I want to be able to save a song that I like so I can listen to it later. Or as a user, I want to be able to view my saved song so I can choose which one I want to listen to. And based on that, the development team would create tasks like add save the features button to every song, or create folder of favorite songs of a user, or create shuffle play button in the folder. When we're developing an application, we need to have information on operating environment that the product, that the product needs to cooperate with. Those are usually information about operating system, type of hardware, and all of the basics of the project environment. 
System architecture is a description of the system. Its purpose is to show the overall business structure of individual components and how it will cooperate with the product. It shows relations between elements and life cycle processes. This one specifies each element and component of the system, like user interface, hardware, software, and communication interfaces. Information about user interface after consists of UI mockups, resolution requirements, functions, menus, or navigation links. Hardware interfaces focus on supported device type and communication protocols between software and hardware. Software interfaces specify databases, libraries, external components. It might also mention web browsers. Depending on the type of the project, there might be other requirements that have nothing to do with the functionality of the application itself. For example, there might be a certain level of security needed. This is a place where you can be introduced to some criteria or behavior. That would be it about the software requirement specification. Remember that this document has to be useful and tailored to your business needs. There's a chance that you won't need all of these points in your document. There's also a possibility that there's going to be a lot of different things in there. As long as the documentation is accurate, you're good. Thank you for watching this video. If there's something you want to learn about, make sure to leave a comment down below. Please like this video and subscribe if you enjoy this form of content. And see you soon.